Hey guys, what's going on today? I'm working on a 2018 Toyota RAV4 XLE version. Uh, I'm gonna be putting brake pads on this today. And uh, when you order parts, you gotta make sure you know where the car is manufactured. RAV4s are made, this year anyways, in either Canada, which is North America, or in Japan. So it's gonna say North America or Japan, you just gotta know that detail. I'll show you what I got. So we went to O'Reilly's today. This is their, I think it's house brand. Um, these are ceramics. Uh, ceramics are OE. So we're just going with what OEM would have used, but cheaper. So this comes with brake hardware. These are little glides and whatnot that go on the caliper. And I've already got the wheel off. So this is the passenger side. And to get to the pad, we don't need to take the rotor off, so we can take only this part of the caliper off and leave the bracket behind. Uh, super easy the way you go, but basically this bolt and this bolt take off this top hat. Uh, and if you take out the uh, bracket, it would be this one and this one. And that comes off easy peasy. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All the tools are a C-clamp and a 14 millimeter wrench to do the top part of that caliper just to get the pad off if you were to take off the rotor you would need a 17 millimeter wrench um, i prefer to use wrenches over ratchets because it's a straight line so when you go to torque it is like in line with the bolt and it doesn't shear off to the side as much so your knuckles don't get busted if you need to guard your knuckles i like these impact gloves uh, for mechanics they work pretty well for not bleeding so now I'm gonna go ahead and get started, show you how to take the caliper off. All right guys, I hope that's a good angle. I'm new to this camera work stuff. Uh, movie magic, those came off with these. They were actually super easy anyways. Very light torque. Um, this is simple, because it's a newer car. These are coming pretty free, but if this was kind of rusted, you can put a, uh, I think it's a 17 millimeter on this right here to keep it from spinning while you take this one out so that this is not spinning in place. Because then we're not gonna get anywhere. I'm taking both of those out. There is a hose that comes up here on the top of the shock. So we're gonna lift this up towards that way and back. Here's the pads, worn down pretty good. A lot of times the rear will move, burn more than the front away if these aren't sliding. They are kind of moving, they're pretty stiff. Yeah, it moves actually pretty good. But if these are stiff and not moving, then you'll be using that piston on the caliper We pushing just the rear pad. What happens is as it pushes on the rear, it equalizes the pressure by letting that slide. So they get 50-50 wear, and that's a really good sign that these are 50-50. So if you have in the back more than their front, these are not sliding, you take them apart, clean that out, relubricate them, put them back together. Now I'm gonna push the caliper, I mean the piston in here. And on this particular master cylinder, there's a vent. Normally what you need to do is pop the hood, take the cap off the master cylinder, and then um, start pushing that in. Uh, every vehicle is different. Check how it's made. Sometimes you need to have a OBD2 port um, diagnostic tool. Snap-on makes a nice one. Uh, to activate the ABS so you can properly move this brake fluid on this one i'm going to just push it back in i use the old uh, pad situate on there and i get my c-clamp put it on the caliper and what i've done is i try to put it on the housing where there's nothing vital like this would be bad if you damage that so i'm on the back of the housing i use the brake pad because otherwise the caliper I'm sorry, the C-clamp uh, threaded here area would go into that pocket. Uh, it takes longer to thread that. This is faster. So again, I'll get this situated and I'll push this back. It's going in easy, good sign. Nothing's leaking, good sign. Car's a year old, 50,000 miles on it. It's a lot of driving for a year. And so it should look like this when you're done. 
Uh, this here is pushed all the way in flush. Good to go. Okay, so as you get your new brake pads out, there will be four, a pair for each side, and you can inspect them to see if any of them look unique. Sometimes they'll have a little metal uh, finger that kind of lets it, it's a wear indicator, and when it gets down to a certain point, like the old ones were, it will drag that metal on this uh, rotor, and it makes them squeal. So that's what you hear when your pads need to be changed. These don't have any. So all four of these are exactly the same, which is odd, but I don't care. I'm going to use them. So I'm going to go ahead and install them. It's real simple. Uh, it's rounded. So you can line that up with the rotor and they slide in. I usually put the bottoms in first because the tension is on the bottom and then just lay it flat. Just like that. Let's flip this over. It slides straight down. Make sure these things are pushed in so you have clearance. Um, from the old orientation, they should have moved because now you have new pads. As those pads got thinner, this hat would be, no, it could be 50-50. Hmm. So I'm installing the caliper now with my fingers, just make them finger tight. And then I'm gonna see if it'll just let me tighten them up without the additional wrench down here. See how that's spinning right here? So what I need to do is get the other wrench and make that stop spinning. Sure enough, 17 millimeter is that correct size. So while holding the 17 millimeter still, I'm gonna pull the 14 millimeter to tight. Repeat. And that's the passenger side done. So what I do now is I will hit the brake pedal and I want all the um, clearance, the tolerance gone. So I'm letting the brake fluid come back down into here and put pressure on this. So it'll fill up all that gap. And the reason I do that is, if I went and did the other side right now and I repeated the backs, um, all the fluid could come up and out of the overflow of the master cylinder, leaking all over the brake uh, booster and the car, and that eats paint. So I do that before I start on the next side every single time. So that is everything car is done on this side i'll put the wheel back on all right guys so that wraps up that vehicle hopefully this video has helped you to uh see what you're getting into or maybe get you out of something you've already gotten into and you're stuck uh it's pretty straightforward very easy i think brakes are one of the first things people try to tackle even though if you fail it's your life but uh if you did it right and the brakes break then they're fixed so try to get out there especially when it's days like this beautiful sun's out and uh get some of your projects accomplished have a good day